I had never thought about looking at my father or anything. And what I thought was that my grandmother, she kind of looked like Schultz from Hogan's Heroes. Yeah. And we ran the guy out. Yeah. So I, but it was never important to me. Yeah. But, you know, lately now they have these star searches on her. Where you can dial, uh, not star search, but families. You can find yeah, yeah. relatives. So I told my wife when I said, why don't you write that company and see if they can find anything out about my father, where he went, because my, my mother never talked about him. Yeah. Didn't tell me a thing. Huh. I could have been left on the doorstep. No pictures or anything. No pictures or nothing. So she sent to this thing, and they sent it back with his name and where he'd worked and everything. Cause all I wanted to do was see if he had a badge, like from work, where I could see a picture. Yeah. To see what he looked like. Yeah. And they sent me back this information about no pictures but names. Uh -huh. Where he lives uh, in Las Vegas. Yeah. So we're out there on a Halloween, a Halloween Havoc yeah. four years ago. Uh -huh. And with the Tenays. And they went up to, uh, Mike's got a beautiful cabin up in Utah. And they went up there to spend the weekend. And Cindy and I, she got on late in the flight. And we just didn't want to drive that far. So the next thing we get up. I said, let's go look at this address, and we'll see who lives there. Yeah. They're Heenans, but there's like three or four names there. So we drive up, and it's uh, it's on the other side of the strip in Vegas, uh -huh. and uh, it's a nice neighborhood, across from a high school. I said, we'll just sit here in the car and watch to see who comes in or out. Yeah. I said, if there's a kid on the porch playing a banjo, we're getting out of here. <laughs> so I waited. Oh, two minutes. <laughs> I, I, it was going to be there hours, but I couldn't uh, wait. Uh, so I said, we'll drive up to the door. I'll park the car in the driveway, and you knock on the door and tell whoever answers that you were lost. And we're trying to find Farnham Street. There's what we used to be able to say to us, Farnham and Durnham. Yeah. We're trying to find Farnham Street. So this woman comes to the door. She's she got, she got glasses on and gray shirt. kind of looks like she could be a sister. Uh, I don't really know. So I told my wife, I said, put your butt against the hood of the car so whoever faces you has to look at me. Uh, so I got a camera. So while the woman's talking to her, I pick it up and I drop it. Uh, uh, I pick the camera up again, I hear it. <laughs> I can't figure it out. I throw the thing down. Uh, uh, hey, we don't know. She's trying to help her with the street. She goes in the house. Her husband comes out. He looks like me. Uh, and he walks by and he looks at me and he turns his head and looks back for just, just a, a blink uh, of a second. Uh, and goes in the garage and comes out with a street maps. And they got it across the hood of the car and they're trying to find this for Cindy. Uh -huh. And I'm thinking to myself, when she gets back in the car, they will say, we wish we could help you. Well, thank you very much. Well, I wish there was more we could do. They get back in the car and I said, boy, these seem like nice people. Uh -huh. I said, I'm gonna go in. She says, let's go to Denny's first and have breakfast. I said, I'm this close uh -huh. after 53 uh -huh. years. I'm gonna go uh -huh. choke on a bone out of Denny's uh -huh. and get hit by the car. Uh -huh. She said, I'll be right behind you. So I got out of the car, and she went right behind me. Yeah. So I knocked on the door. The woman came to the door. I said, excuse me, ma'am, may I see you and your husband, please? And she kind of stared at me for a moment. And she said, Jim. And Jim comes walking out. He's got a Notre Dame t-shirt on, and a Notre Dame game had just started. Uh -huh. He said, yes. And I said, I have reason to believe that you and I are brothers. He said, come on in. I came in, I showed him my birth certificate. I showed him where my father had signed on there. Uh, uh, I also told him what my father's job was. My mother told me he was uh, a printer uh, in Chicago, also printed labels for Capone. Uh -huh. Oh, okay. And also printed racing forms. Uh -huh. And uh, my dad could, he had to go to bars. He had, he had symbols on his knees and a banjo. Uh -huh. And uh, if a guy was down his luck, he'd give the guy his suit stuff like that, but I, I never knew him. Yeah. So I sit and I tell him for an hour. I was nervous. Yeah. Mo most nervous I've ever been in my life. Yeah. I'm telling him everything I know. I showed him my picture, my passport, and everything. And he never said, wait a minute. Yeah. No, wait. Yeah. Uh -uh, not my, never. You just sat there and listened. Yeah. And we got done, he stood up, he said, welcome to the family. Yeah. And he hugged me. Uh, and we talked for a little bit more. I said, do you have a picture of my father? So he gives me a picture of my father. Now you can go to photographers and get a picture of a cowboy or a fire. Yeah, yeah. Well, my dad had a picture of a 
cowboy with a gun and a cowboy hat on. Yeah. He looks like a lamb's in his yeah. 70s. <laughs> so I look at the picture, he says, you can have it. So we go back to MGM Grand. I have a show there next night, and the phone rings. It's my brother Jim. He said, I haven't slept all night. He said, I called your other brother in Florida. I had a brother that was in Florida, an older brother. who was six miles from me. I never knew. Uh, Drove by all the time to the beach. Uh, he's 10 years older than me. And he's from Chicago, like they all are. He's retired uh, from a, he was in some kind of transportation business. Um, my brother Jim is a security cop in Vegas. Mm-hmm. At the Hilton. You have to put Hilton under the people who find him. Uh, uh, but he was uh, security in Air Force One for... Uh, Johnson and Nixon, uh-huh. who's in the Air Force. And my my younger brother is a priest. And your brother's name is? Bob. Bob. Oh, yeah, that's right, Bob. Yeah. And all the kids ask him at school about, where's your brother? He's going to have to pay me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he makes it a little hard on uh, like, Do your homework, give this. Uh, but uh, he's an educator now. He's not a priest any longer. Uh-huh. He's an educator. And... Um, they turned out to be one of the best things I ever did was go in. Uh-huh. Now I got three brothers. I had a sister who only lived a couple hours. I hear her died. Uh-huh. My father is deceased now, gone. What did he die? 92. Uh-huh. And I used to wrestle at the showboat in Vegas. Uh-huh. And they live a mile or so from the showboat. My name was on the marquee. I said, did any of you ever put this together? Uh-huh. And they said, well, people would ask us, are you related to this guy on TV, Bobby Hanna? They said, no. They just didn't watch wrestling. Yeah, yeah. Some, people just, ask you if they ever, yeah. some people just never watch wrestling. Yeah, yeah. But now, well, my brother and my older brother wearing a t-shirt and challenging people around town. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and now I've got nieces and nephews and aunts and uncles, and I'm a godparent to one of my niece's children. Uh, I've got about 80 more people. So my wife said, isn't this great? I said, yeah, it's a ball. An hour ago, we were on our way to Denny's. Now I got to buy 85 Christmas gifts. <laughs> it's a ball.